Hello and welcome to Agents of Clicks, a podcast about all things Hero Clicks. Uh, today it's just me, Dale, and Chris. Hello. Uh, so this is a special episode, specifically looking at the updated rules. Uh, we'll have a little bit of our normal chat, a bit of the kind of news that's came out. Although there isn't all that much really. Uh, it's mainly going to be discussing the new rules, the big changes, the little ones people might not have seen, and how we think it's going to affect the game as a whole, the meta, the pieces that are going to be hit by it, what's going to drop in and out of favour. Um, this is probably, we're not sure how long this is going to go, so rather than hold you and wait for all this long, we're going to have a quick chat on the news, skip straight to it. Uh, really, the big news is the rules have dropped. Uh, the second is that there is a lot of Hammer of Thor out there. Um, it's a little bit all over the place at the moment. They, there's just reviews and openings from everywhere, so there's no set, nice, easy place we can say, yep, go there, read everything. Uh, so we're going to wait off until next week for that, um, although we'll probably chat about some stuff at the end if we feel like we have a bit of time. Yeah, we'll see how long it actually takes us to go through all these rules, and if we've got, if we think that it's not getting on too late, we might quickly go through a few figures from uh, Hammer of Thor, but yeah, play by ear. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like a plan. Um, but yeah, as, as usual, uh, Chris is going to give us the more insightful idea on the rules. And I'm going... Yeah. Somebody who's read the rules. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I'm going to sit here and play as dumb and have a guy who's glanced the rules and we'll try and ask all the questions that I hope that you guys are thinking and they will then go from a yeah. experienced meta side and see what we think is going to change. But I'll, yeah. yeah, Chris, fire away. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to focus on the uh, powers and abilities. Um, good place to start, I thought. Um, as we know from like the previews, they changed a lot of the wording of powers and how they worked, really. So what I don't want to do is go through and just read out what the powers and abilities card said. I'm assuming people have common sense enough to read and we've also covered quite a lot of it in an episode we did about the and we were previewing the rules um so i'm not gonna focus too much on powers um that we've already gone through really or that haven't really changed um and if you have if you are listening to this episode then i would advise you to try and maybe pull up um the rules you've got the powers and abilities card your core rule book and then your supplementary uh, rule book um, as well as like this team abilities and what the other one the sequence card as well uh, yeah. I'm not really going to focus too much on that but anyway let's start off the, the powers so I'm focusing first of all on like the speed powers uh, just because that's what order it is in um, so there's a few not so many changes in this um, first of all just having a look at flurry and mainly because just highlighting what it doesn't say because Flurry now is just basically making include to close attacks. It doesn't mention the damage depletion modifier, um, which basically is because there's no such thing as a damage depletion modifier anymore. So there's no reason for Flurry not to activate it. Um, more about that when we, you know, when we talk about other stuff, but that's just the first thing to mention. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm trying to think of some uh, of figures that specifically struggled and lost out because of damage depletion modifier, and the only ones I'm really thinking of is duos, but there really, really isn't a huge number of them. Well, because and they're not, the yeah, they're not really making any more of them. I think there's only two duos in modern mm-hmm. at the moment anyway. I mean, there's a few figures that might be able to attack more than once. Um, you'd be looking at things like, uh, the, the other day, it was a class of retaliator. Who then yeah. cross retaliates, and then there's another colossal hanging about. You think, oh, I'm going to shoot it, and then I forgot about damage depletion modifier, and I was only doing one damage, and it had toughness. So I won't need to remember that anymore. Yeah, well, that'll save a bit of time. Yeah, um, I think because it was the damage depletion modifier, a uh, bit of a mouthful, um, was brought in when it was like heroes for hire and team bases and things like that. So the, it was brought in to try and nerf those a little bit. And I think now that hopefully whiz kids are not going to bring out figures and attacks three or four times a turn, then maybe there's not so much need for the damage depletion modifier. So I'm assuming it's just simplifying to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, go moving on in other speed. As a, um, looking at Earthbound Neutralize, which has changed quite a bit. Rather than getting rid of symbols, it's only getting rid of improved abilities, like improved movement, improved... 
um, targeting um, and willpower. So it's basically saying you cannot use any of those. Which there's no real. I mean, the only time I've ever seen people use it is when you've got, say, a character like Jakim who can pick a power. Well, Super Scroll used to do it. You would just pick an Earthbound to get rid of your flight so you can get carried. So there's no real reason to ever pick this because it's not benefiting you anyway. Um, there's not many figures that actually have it. So nothing much to say about that. Bess, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, just other than the, I, I kind of spotted Earthbound used to be a uh, this is less relevant now, but definitely used to be a power used when people who change size like Ant Man's and Giant Men who yeah, just get rid of some more, yeah. got hurt that were dropped down to standard characters. That's obviously not going to be a thing anymore. Well, they can uh, just make it a special power just to say you have this damage symbol now. Yeah, it's just instead one of, those, of doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't think there's anyone who active. Uh, I don't think there's anyone in rotation that specifically uses it in that way. Um, but it definitely used to be a thing. Yeah, um, but yeah. It was. It always seemed a bit clunky because it felt like losing loads of things for it. it. Was just a bit. Just to change size. Yeah, just 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 to change size. Just didn't seem very. Uh, it just seemed a bit ham handed for it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I think that one of the things that always kids are doing is trying to simplify things. So if there's something um, that was wordy before or looked a bit uh, complex, I think um, they've just tried to like use uh, simplify it really. And it might be that they've changed how it works, but um, I don't know. It's difficult to see this through the eyes of a new player when you're so used to what it does and you think well why have they changed it what you know what's a big deal well um something like earthbound neutralized you know there was some what it used to it just used to get yeah so if you had like indom it made no sense to say well i want you to change size but you're losing your willpower at the same time but, yeah, yeah. But- that is so specifically to remove that, but yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't mind that being a kid. Like, yeah. the, way, the way they've changed it too is fine. Um, it, it, it's it's more targeted. It's less um, just as a ham-fisted way of kind of going. And you've lost everything that was interesting. Mm. And you look at things like, well, it's just it doesn't it doesn't stack up. You're talking about things like this was a power that could take away like if the fact you're a team symbol if you could get it. It's like why why would you? Why would that need to be worded into the game? Yeah, I don't think you can take away the team symbol. Nothing can do that. But anyway, never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vehicles, so, 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 I think so, so teams effect, and vehicles yeah. didn't. Yeah, I think that, that. Yeah, so they had to like write in things to say, well, you can't get rid of this because they found, you know, you would think that the, 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 the design space that they've got is introducing new symbols, but then they've got to worry about what effects that so earthbound you to take those away but yeah so they had to write in to say that you can't take this away <laughs> but anyway um so there's other, a few other like speed powers that have been reworded but it's all covered in like the previous like to charge how charge and hypersonic speed and running shot um and the fact that they've introduced in no cost actions but we'll talk about them more when we talk go in a little bit of the rule book um the last speed thing I just want to highlight is sidestep because and I think they might have mentioned this in the preview about how they wanted to simplify things so previously it was like um, it was replacing your speed value and then locking it so uh, rather than that they've just worded it so it no longer references your speed value whatsoever so it's just you're still doing exactly the same thing you're moving two squares or up to two squares um, but because it doesn't reference your speed value you don't actually need to say it's locked there's no, you can't, there's no modifiers as well so like looking at if you're carrying somebody with sidestep it's not referencing your speed value um, so you're not taking the minus one or equally if you're coming out of hindering you're not half any speed value to move out because your sidestep doesn't reference your speed value yeah. so it does exactly the same thing but it does it in a few less words and you haven't got to worry about what locked means and things like that so hopefully somebody looking at that as a new player would say you know I'll move two squares I don't need to worry about any modifiers or replacement values 
Yeah, yep. it's simple. Just yeah, it, it does. It's exactly what Sidestep was meant to do, but gets rid of those silly fringe cases like Felix Faust saying, "Oh, you can't do this, that." So you know, Sidestep ten squares or. You know, the more I'm reading through these powers yeah, there were some things where you would have the replacement and then you would say well it's no longer locked or something and then oh I've got two replacement values kicking in so I choose the, the order in which they occur and things uh, yeah so hopefully that is not going to happen quite so much and again when we go on to that sort of crops up um, in when we talk about replacement values I think it's also a book. Anyway, we're getting ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on to attack. Um, I'm just going to mention a lot of these were covered in the previews. Um, things like energy explosion, the changes to that, and pulse wave. Just one thing to mention on pulse wave. Um, be- they've got rid of like the idea of area of effect for energy explosion and pulse wave because pulse wave area effect was co- was a little bit confusing because of range when you used to modify it because the area effect was calculated after you did your replacement and modifier so whenever you like modified your range and did a pulse wave it was always a bit confusing to try and work out uh, th- what the that- order you did it in I'm assuming this is uh, this is in the, I think you're referring to the fringe case of like what if X character is perplexing up my range and now because of that perplex he's inside my pulse wave no, range. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about calculating okay. the range of pulse wave. So if you had say an eight range, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, no, it had to be an odd number, doesn't it? Um, seven. You had seven range. Okay. And you pulse you perplexed it up by one, and then you pulse wave. In the old rules, you would go 7 plus 1 divided by 2, rather than 7 divided by 2 plus 1, because the area of effect of the pulse wave is not a replacement value, or wasn't a replacement value. So right. you cal- yeah. So when you did that, it was a confusing thing, and then you had to speak to your opponent, and hopefully they knew that as well, because otherwise... It was like, it's got four inch. No, it's got five. Because it's replacing them. But anyway. It's different. Yeah. So the area effect has been removed. So you do not need to worry about things like that. Um, yeah. So you just replace modifier as normal. Obviously, it's worded differently, but it does pretty much the same. Um, it just, again, it simplifies it because it's looking at printed values. Um, do, do, do. So... Next one, I want to look at Quake. Quake wasn't covered in the previews. Um, it's had a couple of little changes. Um, you will notice that it has the keyword like knockback, which is basically, if you, when we look at abilities, it's just something like they've brought in just to having a keyword that says, like, stop. There's a specific um, definition of what knockback is. Um, so there's a few powers that say knockback. It just means that, uh, you know, when you see that, you just can go onto the abilities and say, ah, oh, that's what knockback does. So, like, uh, Force Blast does it, um, Quick does it, and I think Super Strength does it for close attacks. Um, so, Quick, so it does it pretty much the same. So, you're doing anybody adjacent, you're attacking them, and you're dealing them two damage. So, obviously, with the knockback thing, means they're knocked back, but. Um, the thing that is changing is that you can do a single target quick in the same way that you can do a single target pulse wave, and that will deal normal damage. Not as good as pulse wave, obviously, because you're not ignoring all the powers and abilities, but for people with, say, there's a quite a few characters that do something like I do a leap and climb, and then I do quick as a free action afterwards. And you think, well, that's not really that great, but if they've got a high damage value. Not- yeah, it's pretty good if you did one target, if you got like a four damage or something. Previously, Quake was like, I'm not going to bother ever doing that. Um, because I would rather just punch somebody. And it becomes a little bit more useful, especially if you've got it as like a special ability or something like that. Um, the other thing that's changed is it is now still damage dependent because it used to knock back two squares no matter what damage you did. And I think that was a change it did t- to try and buff it. Um, but again, they have got rid of that. It is now strictly dependent upon how many damage the target has taken or clicked, which I think is another slight change they've made. 
Yeah. Um, so rather than, yeah, I'll just, while we'll mention that, I'll just go on to the knockback ability. Um, so it says that when one or more opposing characters takes damage from this character's attack, you may choose to knock back all hit characters in amount equal to the damage clicked. I can't remember if the old rules had, um, I know they had like uh, damage dealt, damage taken, and then damage clicked. So damage clicked is normally going to be equal to the damage you take, um, but it might be something like a stop click. So if you if you deal you know uh, four damage, somebody has invulnerability, they take two damage, but they've got a stop click after the once click, so they're only clicking once. Then they will be knocked back one square. So it's a damage the dial has the amount of click the dial has turned for damage clicked. Yeah, so it might be different than damage taken occasionally, but not very often. Okay. Um, and I think that's just, I don't know if that get referenced quite a lot, but you know, just so you know what it means when it comes up. Yeah. Um, so that was quick. We're on to precision strike, because that, again, that is pr- pretty much the same as the preview. Um, but just, just something to highlight is a precision strike now it doesn't say about evasion it specifically just references super sensors so for other abilities that say evade um it doesn't affect them like say the kc team ability that gives you an evasion roll for ranged attacks the precision strike doesn't affect that it just affects the, the d6 roll for super sensors okay so you precision so i still it's still a five or six on suit on on KC, the KC yeah. version of the type, type of super sensors because it's not super yeah. sensors at all. Okay. No, but it just mentions evade, but precision strike doesn't mention evade now. It just mentions super sensors. Maybe, um, uh, I can't remember there... if, the, if the preview said that as well, but I'm just. No, I noticed that. So. Is there anyone who specifically has a trait that. Which I think is if, there is if there's a Spider Man that hasn't got super sensors, but has like evades on a 4, 5, or a 6, something like that, that means he's going to be. Just going to that one, so he doesn't, you know, because like it's if, super senses. If it says super senses, yeah, yeah that's what, that's what minus, I'm, the precision strike gives a minus one to it. Yeah, but that's if what it I'm saying. Four, it's the one. It goes to five or six. That's what I'm saying. It's the one that it doesn't specify that he can use super senses, but that he evades on X on whatever. If something, if so, yeah, if something says he something evades without mentioning super senses, then precision strike will not affect it. I don't think there is that. I'm thinking about this. I, doubt it. I think it'll just be like. Super sensors, but on a different number. Generally. Yeah. Um, I can only think of the KC team belly, but you know there might be something else very deep within the, an old figure or something. Um, next one just to highlight is steel energy. Um, the only because th- it's changed when it triggers, and also to say that it's only allowed to heal once per attack. So it triggers after resolutions rather than when the character takes damage. Um, so if you have flurry in or something, you have to wait until after the flurry has resolved before you get to heal. But will you get to heal too because there's two separate attacks? There's two separate attacks. I think you're healing off each attack, but you can't do something like quick steel energy and then heal like five times or something. Okay, that's fine. Um, Obviously, it didn't happen very often, but I remember we Book of, Book of Skulls used to do that quite a bit, where you would like three action. You have the, uh, a lot of quakes running around and you'd heal up a few times. But yeah, so it's only one per attack, but it's after resolution then. Um, telekinesis has changed a tad. Um, it is now. They've reined in the range of it. So instead of like an eight square placement, it's going to be six squares. Um, which is a bit of a nerf, but also the target character can be placed a maximum of six squares away. But the actual person who's using TK uses their normal range with a minimum of six. So if they had like eight range, they could be eight squares from the target square that they wanted to place the character in, but the target character must be within six. You can't ever increase that. Okay. So it's a little bit confusing, I think, that you you got to use two distances. Um. So, 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 so the, I'm confused. Go on. So what? So that the you can only the, the square. 
You can only move a character six squares. Yes. That's 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 so fixed the regardless. Characters current square to the the where you want to move them can only be six squares. But the actual range in which you can move from these six squares is dictated by your actual range or yeah, but it's minimum six. six. Yeah. So if you've got a character like Jakim who's got say an eight range and he's taking, he can be eight squares away from the target square, but the target character can only be six squares. So if somebody's two squares in front of you, then you could still TK them eight squares, but they only going to move six. Okay, so it's a way of reining it in a little bit, but still it's giving high point bit, characters high the range extra. characters with TK as on a slight disadvantage because they could be sitting back a bit. Oh, okay, you what I mean, it's not like a huge change, but I think the six squares is more the because previously like an eight square TK plus maybe the running shot or something was like nearly across the board. I think they've just reined in a little bit. So yeah. the TK is not, you I'll know, you can't sort of hit another starting area really maybe, but yeah. I mean, there's, there's enough ways to get into someone's starting area that doesn't require TK these days. But yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Six squares. I mean, eight was quite a lot. If you're looking at like placement, um, so the object attack has changed as well with TK. They basically just turned it into an object attack rather than its own little thing. Okay. Um, which does mean then you can't get around stealth for that. Um, and you're not having to form a little triangle with an object attack. You're just basically picking up an object within range of fire and then making an attack using your own range of line of fire. Um, minimum six again. So, so you have to form a, for the object attack, you don't have to form a little triangle and go, can the object see that target square as well? But you it does mean pick... you can then like pick up an object from like six squares behind you and smash yeah. it so it's had 12 mm. squares, like just moving objects from out completely out of relevance to hit somebody. Yeah, so it, that, that's actually a benefit, yeah. And so if you've got somebody like um, Jean Grey who uses TK a lot or something, then if you're trying to get an object attack off, then sometimes it's a bit awkward because the object has got to see the target square as well but you don't have to worry about the line of fire from that object square to the target square and stuff just a bit more straightforward she basically she, can, she wants to shoot this guy can she see us can she see an object to throw at them yes that, that'll do yeah cool um, as I say it just doesn't get through stealth like used to because the wounds you're not targeting the square you're targeting it's just a, a normal range attack against the object attack against the uh, character so yeah, it's changed a little bit, so that's a little bit, you have to get your head round if you're used to using TK a lot. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a benefit, I think, with the object. It makes it a little bit easier to get used to that, but obviously the range has been shortened. Yeah, one huge change, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. Um, and the last one of attack powers I just want to mention, that not anybody ever uses this, but um, smoke cloud has changed slightly in that it doesn't have the caveat. You still ever need to get the minus one to attack if they're occupying a marker, opposing characters anyway. You don't have the caveat that says unless they can use smoke cloud themselves or can see through hindrance train. Okay, so it's just it's just you get minus one attack. There's no way around it anymore. Because um, there were no. fringe cases and it was stupid. Anyway. Yeah, no one uses smoke cloud anyway unless it's a free action. Yeah. Yeah, so that don't expect that to happen very often. Um Okay, any other attack powers you want to ask any questions on? Uh, uh, no, I just I, I, I do kinda of wanna put I I think I've kind of touched it already, but the powers and abilities card very specifically shows a number of uh symbol that, that, that symbols and there's just several of them that are missing that I specifically remember. Like, obviously, there's no transporter reference, there's no duo sharpshooter reference. Yeah, no I think all, they've all been assigned to the old rules. Um, I think they are obviously they're not going to get used going forward. Um, but the Wiz Kids, I think it was in the supplementary rule book, which I think it had a note to mention that um, they're going to work. They're going to work exactly the same as before. They have not. They're not. They're not actually in the rule book, but they were going to produce some sort of document that sort of summarizes old rules. They didn't give a time of when they're going to do it. But we'll get around to it. 
But at the moment, you should treat them as they work exactly the same as they used to. Fair enough. So it might get a little bit confusing if, say, I was going to mention something like carry ability. Yeah. Carry ability doesn't say that you can't, you know, doesn't actually say uh, in here that you can't carry a flyer. Huh? I don't know. It says somewhere. Um, doesn't actually say on the power ability card, but I think it does say on the. the what, sorry? Uh, so not in the keyword section of powers and abilities. Uh, I can't scroll down it, carry. it takes so Yeah, I'm not doing the heaven belly. Anyway, you can't carry a flyer, but I can't see where it says that. It might actually just say that in the rule book rather than the inherent abilities. But it doesn't say anything about say the transport or flight symbol. So that's a little bit confusing if previously you weren't allowed to do that, but it doesn't say anything about not being able to do it. But as I say, it says, it was good to say, treat them like you always would. So I don't think, you know, still can't carry the, transporters. The reference to it is, I thought transport, just a general pass there. To flyers and passengers, it says, uh, you can carry, carry, you can use the carry ability to carry up to X oh, characters. Oh, passenger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Including characters that are the same size that are, that don't have the wing symbol. Right, yes. I knew it was on there somewhere. It's just, there's a lot of text in this. Yeah, it gives the passengers, which is another change, yeah. Um, right, so, what am I up to? Defense powers. Yeah. Okay, where's my sheet? So, there's a couple of ones I wanted to highlight here. Um, defend, no longer references, like defense value, it references printed defense value. Which means then you ca it has to be adjacent. You can't do what you did before, or if you've ever done it, um, like a daisy chain defend. Um, so if you had three people in a row, and one person at the end of the row had 18, so that means all of them could get 18. Now, they all have to be adjacent to be able to share the value because it's printed value. So it's only looking at the printed value of the person. It's not looking at, oh, there's another person that I could swap defense, and then the, I could swap my defense again um, with somebody else. It doesn't happen with defend very much, but it would happen with like the team abilities that replicate that. Yeah, so just if you've got like a defender traits. team or yeah, they've all been changed as well to use printed defense value. Not a huge change, but just something to keep in mind if you do play that sort of team that everybody has to be adjacent. So instead of having a big long row stretched out, you'll have to clump. Put the guy with a high defense in the middle of your copy. Like you used to. Like yeah. ages and ages and ages ago. Yeah. I mean, it probably comes up when, when a lot of GSA guys, or if you've got them wild cards and things like that, then again, you're going to have to look at placement a bit more carefully rather than having them all strung out. Um, and the other thing. Yeah, just a thing to mention about barrier just because smoke cloud has it as well is it mentions that the, when the duration ends it says the beginning of the next turn even if this is lost so for example you can have barrier for one click and you push off it but if you barrier it doesn't disappear it just stays it's the same as the outwit barrier it doesn't get rid of the um markers same as smoke cloud fair enough which, yeah, it's a little bit of a boost to it. I suppose if you've got one click and you haven't got willpower, then you're worried about I can't barrier again now because I'm going to push off barrier and then they're going to disappear. But no, it will still persist. So that's a little bit of buff to it. And a few other powers that have been changed with the preview, like, I'm not going to mention, but like Invincible, Mastermind, um, things like that. So... <laughs> Regeneration, those all change, but they're in line with what the preview said. Yeah, fair enough. Anything you want to ask about defense powers? Uh, no, they all, everything seems pretty the same as what they've already told us. Yeah, I'm, honestly, I'm just going through highlighting stuff that's not the same or has Obvious. wasn't covered by the preview. Oh, yeah, little changes that you may not notice. So, going to damage powers. Um leadership is changed a little bit from what the previewed it still does the same thing but it's a different timing of it because previously when they said it was like a unique modifier 
um, where you get your plus one action total for all characters if you use a power. You just got rid of the unique modifier just to make it a bit simpler. But they've said the, the timing of it has to be at the beginning of the turn that you have to have leadership. So you can't like push onto it or somebody with like a free action, pick a power, choosing leadership is going to get you no benefits whatsoever. You have to have the leadership at the beginning of the turn to get your plus one action. And then obviously you're rolling your dice to see if you can take a token of somebody um, at the beginning of the turn as well. So if you've got Goblin King or something, then picking leadership is absolutely pointless. Because none of the effects will kick in at the beginning of the turn. Fair enough. Which is sort of, yeah, because obviously the turn structure now where you've got the... You can't do any actions at the beginning of the turn or the end of the turn. It's got to be in the action phase. Which again was in the preview, so I'm not going to like dwell on it, but... Um, things in a power and abilities card as anything that says at the beginning of the turn is underlined just to highlight the timing yes yeah, yeah. seems seems straightforward and um, yeah. yeah so the only other damage power I wanted to just highlight was perplex or oh, the only change really is that the, it does not mention anything about the modifiers disappearing if the dial is turned. So they stay and end at the normal duration. So okay. it's a little bit of a buff to that if you're going to use it to perplex down like an opponent, because I often never bothered because I thought, well, I perplex down his defense occasionally rather than up my attack in case I missed. But now it's much more useful to perplex down the defense if you attack him twice because you're not going to lose the perplex. So it's still going to kick in, even though you might have damaged him with your first attack. So now it isn't until your next turn, regardless of whether you lose yeah, the power. It doesn't, whether... yeah. Well, no, if you lose the power, that's different. But okay. if the, you know, when you were perplexing, say, down an opponent's defense, yeah. and you hit yeah. them, then the perplex would go once they've taken damage. But right. now it doesn't go, but the modifier still stays. Okay. So it's going to, I think it's going to be more useful to use on the minus. Because normally it was like you modify your own combat values. But as well, if you take damage, then that's still going to stay as well. It's not going to go. Yeah, so it's got a little bit better, I think. A little bit, anyway. As if it needed uh, to. See you again. As if it needed to. Yeah, still pretty good. Obviously, there was a few changes to other powers uh, as uh, previewed with, like, support and probability control um, and outwit, but they're all in line with what the preview said, so I'm not going to discuss them unless you want me to. No, as I said, it was in that... Uh, the last one they released where I was like, yeah, and here's a few suggestions that people gave us which top on board, these updated versions, and they're the ones that work with in the end. Yeah. Um, I think, what was that about? There was one about objects. I can't remember one of the other things they've said. The ones that tw- they tweaked. Um, oh, there, was a, there was a few was things like how regen was worded because they gave, came up with like a... Uh, Slightly, I think it was like regen and support was worded funnily yeah. uh, and they just went and somebody came up with a much more elegant way of saying it and was like that's the better we'll yeah, take like that support is like a d6 minus 2 minimum 2 yeah. so rather than having a chart that says you know just go minus 2 minimum 2 instead of minimum 1 just there is yeah that's yeah. the thing um, and obviously um, prop control being reduced down to just attack just rolls attacks. breakaway rolls yeah, but that was again In what line. I previewed. Yeah. 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 That sounds right to me. Okay. Um, no, I know we mentioned abilities. I'm just going to quickly go through one or two of them that's changed. Um, you obviously got your inherent abilities, which again they previewed all of these. Just carrying has changed a little bit. Um, it specifically mentions that you can't carry a vehicle. Not that you might have done that very often, but occasionally it would crop up. You cannot do that anymore. There is no restrictions on the symbols apart from the same size wing symbol, which, as we previously said, is hidden under the passenger key phrase ability. So, um, so carrying, like, say the bit. Um, again, we might have to wait to see what they say about old combat symbols like durability, things like that. 
because uh, at the moment I'm not 100% sure if you would be allowed to carry that or if it would fall under the treated exactly the same as you would have done in the past. I suspect you treat it like you would do in the past and say you can't carry Joe's, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it does not mention anything about base size, so multi base figures are all right to carry, obviously, as long as they are not larger than you. Um, so things like Colossals carrying other Colossals might be a thing if you've got more than one. One's got a wing symbol, one hasn't. Um, and the other thing that changes neither character can be holding an object. Okay. It used to be that the character being carried can't hold an object. Uh, but now it's both characters involved in the carry that neither of them can hold an object. And that's pretty much it for that. Um, improved abilities. I think there's only one little change I just want to highlight that for the one it's like destroying blocking terrain um, for targeting it only destroys one piece of blocking terrain rather than like anything that you draw the line of fire through. So there's not many people that can do that. I'm looking at you, Mr. Cosmic Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, you just gotta remember that. It's not like you can shoot through all the walls. You can just shoot, you know, you pick one, you can shoot through that. Okay. So the yeah, so the big big winner being anyone with multiple bases that can't fly can now potentially be carried. I'm trying to think of who that is, and I can only think of Ghost Riders. I don't think uh, they're peanut bases, but it could be like Colossals. You could have one yeah. like Sinestro who has flight, and you have Brimstone who does not have flight, and he can carry Sinestro, then can carry Brimstone. Uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Or uh, like single like single base Colossals, there's a few. Um, things like Dr. Monicus's like, little fellas. They can also be, uh, TK doesn't have that restriction either. So I think TK is just says doesn't say multi-target base, but it says single base characters. So it doesn't specify size. So if you had single base giants or colossals, then you can TK them. Okay. So my expense, uh, you're not really, you look at that. Yeah, it doesn't come up very often, but you never know. Um, other, so we're going on to like the key phrase abilities. Um, already mentioned flight, colossal stamina and giant reach haven't changed. They've changed their word in a little bit about giant reach for how you. T it's not looking at targeting. Yeah, you know, it's given it like a improved targeting to be able to see through hindering to target a counter with a close attack. It's a little bit confusing. Um, not hundred percent sure why that's changed. You're basically not targeting a square. I think they're trying to get rid of anything where you're targeting a square. Okay. And you always target the character within the square. So in order to like punch somebody who's in stealth, I had to give somebody with giant reach improved targeting. See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I think they've tried to because maybe it's a little bit confusing when you're trying to target a square or you're trying to target the character in the square. Does that not so put with some fringe cases for people who like the um, wizard that kind of thing where you don't get. You, you, you don't uh, it's like you're not in stealth you have like an improved version where I'm next to a wall the line of fire to me is blocked does that mean that I can no longer colossal punch him in the first yeah I don't think it's because you need to target the character within square to line of fire so if anything that says you can't draw line of fire to me if I'm in next to blocking terrain or something then yeah you won't be able to colossal punch him you'd have to normally punch him fair enough alright Dolphins get dolphin symbols. Too. Yeah, get. dolphin symbols. Yay! Everybody loves like getting plus one defense uh, in water. Yeah, so, yeah. It was completely useless previously, and now it has a small use. A slightly useless, only less useless. Yeah, and it may come in often if you want a water map. Yeah. Anyway, better than not being be able to use it at all. Um, it's obviously talking here about the protected outwit and pulse wave and stuff and that they mentioned in the previews um yeah i don't understand this uh, hands what? up uh protection outwit it just it, uh, it, it has like a lot you can't of... then choose well it's just instead of like uh can't be countered that is all it replaces because counter and ignore they're getting rid of and the only thing can't use 
So we're just changing to can't use. So if you had somebody who previously had a trait that says my powers can't be counted, they're just going to get protected outwit instead. And basically saying that, and then it explains in that to say you can't choose um, any of my powers with you when you use outwit. So the, the, the specific thing I, I, I need to I, I basically I need to ask is, does this effectively mean that? Nick Fury just effectively has outwit now instead of no, it is not. It is not. It's not outwit. It is his own. The wording on that power stays the same. Outwit functions similarly to it, but he is not using outwit. So people who are protected outwit are still not going to be safe against Nick Fury. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Ish. Like it's fine. It functions I understand similarly. This. Yeah, it functions. It's you know, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine that I it's it's fine that I understand it. It's not okay because I'm sick of just Nick Fury. Well, I really love Nick Fury. Don't complain about him. Never. Never have one now. Protected um, probability control because a lot of people will, like have the deity keyword might have say you can't prob my attacks or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then that goes that and pulse wave is just instead of being, you know, can't be ignored. So like stop clicks are going to get protected that way, protected pulse wave. Any any power that previously said can't be ignored would get protected pulse wave instead. Yes, so it obviously um, pulse wave then does not stop you using that ability. There's one sentence in protected outwit that I don't understand. I understand it in protected pulse wave where it says pulse waves can't be used doesn't yes. apply to this because it's basically saying that Protected from protection from protected pulse wave. The actual key phrase isn't affected by the ignore everything part of pulse wave. That's fine. But why does outwit need to have that? Is it so that you can't outwit protected outwit? Uh, Specifically, just the last yeah, sentence of it is outwits you, can't be used doesn't apply to this key phrase. They're basically saying that you can't if you, outwit if you had a protected power outwit. That said protected outwit. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Then it just says that Outwit can't say that you to stop that power. I don't know. I'm not sure why, because you would never have a power that just says protected Outwit. I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway. That's fine. You can't ever turn off protected Outwit without Wit. Not that I think that you could I do anyway, because I think it's generally buried in a ability... Um, that would then get protected that way anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah, but, yeah if, if, that, if, if that worked, that would have been stupid. I just, I don't, I, I find that I think that it's just a redundant. Caveat, yeah, it seems a bit redundant, but anyway, I don't know why. I'm sure um, it'll come clear. Yes. Uh, so, I don't think there's anything else in there I want to mention. I don't think there's anything that's changed. So I think that's all the dull stuff out the way. This is now because I talk about the stuff that's actually going to change the game. Okay, so we'll close our powers and abilities card and open up our rule books. Um, I just need to open it up because I think I've closed that accidentally at the same time I closed the other thing. I had them all on the same PDF and I closed all of them. Right, to hope, just a second. Right, so we're starting looking at the core rule book now. Yeah. Um, might as well get something that you want to do. So again, I'm not going to just regurgitate everything out of here. I'm just going to go through picking out some changes. It's not going to be comprehensive because I'll probably miss some things. I'm trying to look at changes that aren't like immediately obvious as well. Um, but obviously if you notice something or if you want to discuss something in more detail, feel free to say. Yeah, I'll keep asking you with stupid questions. Yeah. So, um, the just skim through it. There's the action changes which were highlighted in the previews. Yeah, changing them into capitalized, move, close, range, power, free, etc. And no cost. That's stayed the same. Um, I think the only thing again, this was in the previews, but just to highlight. Um, that all actions occur in an action phase because I've got like a structure of the turn so you've got your beginning of the turn action phase, end of turn clearing um, so you're not allowed to do any sort of free actions in the 
uh, beginning or the end of the term like it used to do. So all okay. of them have got to be occurring uh, in the action phase. Which again, within the previews, but just to highlight that it stayed the same. Um, there is a little bit of a timing change, just we're talking about actions and action tokens. Um, when you get the action token is when you're giving um, the power. So giving somebody an action, let's say if you're giving somebody a power action to use a running shot, previously you would give the action as the action result, action token as the action result. Now you're giving it when you give the action. So okay. I say I say I'm giving like blah 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 running shot. Yeah, I put the token on him as I declare the action, and then I do the running shot. So previously it was after I just about as I'm finishing doing the running shot, I put the token on. I know it doesn't really make that much difference, but there's a couple of people that might do. Yes, it does. I'll get onto that. Um, but that is a general rule. I put the action token on when I declare the action that is given. Um, so pushing damage, pushing damage uh, is now as actions resolve, after action resolve, sorry. So it used to be at the same time as like you put the action token on, but now it's like um, being separated. So I say I'm giving running shot, put the token on, give me a running shot. After that's resolved, I check to see am I going to take pushing damage after res as a resolution. Yeah, it's not called after action resolved. I should really try and use the right words. <laughs> yeah. It's after resolutions now, which is the same thing. Uh, so if I'm getting two action tokens on, if I have no willpower, then I'm going to take a push. But I take that after resolutions. We did a change that might, you know... Um, so going back to what you were saying about the timing, is that has created like a few issues, which I think WizKids need to clarify that if you have an effect it says something 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 if some if you have an action token on yeah like you, there's, there's a couple of people like if, uh, you know plus one attack for each action token that you have on you know yeah things that's that mean that basically i always have plus one and if i'm pushing it up plus two like that's that's fine i mean i, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that does well, there's it a green arrow there's a chase green arrow just from elseworlds that says when i have an action token on i can't make range attacks so let's say he has running shot or he doesn't well he has range combat expert but let's see if i give him running shot somehow um i declare running shot i put the token on him now then he does his move and he goes to make the attack but then it says oh you've got a token on you can't make an attack hmm yes so they're going to have to clarify that. They're going to have to clarify. They might come out with something that says if he um, starts his action when with... you declare, you check for things like that before you declare or something. And then it stays. I don't know. They're going to have to come up with. I'm not quite sure why they've changed the timing of it. I can't really see a big deal. Maybe they just wanted to separate out when you were given the token to where you did pushing damage. I. Or oh, they just wanted to make it a good practice that you put the token on before you do the action because in the application of doing the action, there might be lots of different things happening. So yeah. you don't forget to put the token on afterwards. If you're doing mind control, for example, there might be five or six dice rolls you're making. Um, so the action token would then go on afterwards. Now it's got to go on as you declare, as you give the action. But then that, yeah, they need to clarify the timing for when, if people have got anything that keys off action tokens. So it's a little bit confusing at the moment, but I think you just play with, by common sense until they've actually clarified it. Yeah, like play, you know, play, play it as intended. Play the way it, yeah, play it the way it has been done. Um, I don't think they intended to change how that works. I think it's just uh, you know, an unintended consequence of changing the timing of when you put the token on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and I, just, I think the only, other, the only person I could think of that had any difference was the I think it was two people I could think of Batman and Johnny Quick the whose speed abilities change depending on how many action tokens but that yeah. makes no difference because it's at there's the beginning quite of the a few, action yeah there's a few people that will say you get plus one to something if you've got an action token on or whatever but I don't think that's you know? going to 
I don't think even giving all of every figure with that ability, you know, basically plus one to whatever they're effectively doing, I don't think anyone cares. I yeah, can't think it seems like broken. it seems like Green Arrow that says you can't do it if you've got a token. On. <laughs> yeah, you need to clarify that because the timing says that I'm putting it on before I'm making the attack. Which means so, I can't and now an I can't make the attack because I've got a token on. But yeah. I give them the, I've declared an, uh, an action to make an attack, you know. So yeah, just need to clarify that a bit. Um. Okay, that's like that. Um, the other thing, by standards, it mentions. I can't really remember what section it is. I'm just going off where the order I've written stuff in. I think this is like when you're constructing your force. There's a couple of little things um, that says your starting force must include one character that isn't a bystander. Not that I've ever seen any teams that are purely bystanders, but these pogs, there's 15 point yeah, pogs all the, all the second they're bringing out, you might just think that you can do that. One character on your force, starting force, must be not a bystander. And also, which I have come across, um, when in the game, when you're you're defeated, when you have no characters on the force with a point value of one or more, so if only, the only characters you have left on the map are zero point bystanders, then the game ends. I almost lost my first round of nationals because I hadn't yet caught and killed Tickle the cat. I'd killed everything else, but just the cat was alive. And yeah. this is a welcome change because that's really annoying. I mean, screw that yeah. cat and just I anything think I've like won, it. I've won games where I've just had ant tokens on the board at the end. Yeah, from, because the cat. From, uh, because I've made hundreds of them and then they were just like, ah, you can't finish me off now. And you've stuck some points from yeah. something. Yeah. So there's a little couple of changes with bystanders. Um, you know, maybe it's something they may not notice. Um, one of the, I'm going on to golden rules here. Um, I haven't, like, you know, there's lots of things about moving and attacking and whatever on the attack sequence and stuff. It's pretty much the same. I can't see any differences have maybe made the sequence nice but it's always been the same sequence they just haven't really advertised it very well yeah so it's a bit simpler for the, especially for new players i think or if you're trying to look at when an effect triggers and looking at what more point of that is um yeah so i'm going back to golden rule i think which is like a replace and modify um it's just worded They've added a little bit extra words, so you apply replacements, first numbers, and then those that multiply or divide. So, we've had a few instances where you've had powers that have the end up with like two replacement effects happening at the same time. Let's see, you can, um, there's been characters that replace the speed value with something plus a d6. So then when you've done a run and shot, you go, oh, I've got two replacement values happening at the same time. I can choose which order they occur in. So you ended up like doing a 20 square run and shot or something stupid like that. Also, when you had the sniper rifle out from the batteries, I had to errata that straight away because it was when you used hypersonic speed, you would replace your range and then the sniper rifle was replacing range. So they had to errata the sniper rifle just to make sure that it wasn't giving you 10 square range. range with hypersonic. So they've basically added this little uh, additional couple of words in. So anytime you're getting a replacement with a number, you replace that first and then you do your division afterwards. So if you've got like a Thing that says your speed is replaced with your normal speed plus a d6 that would occur first and then you do the any halving you need to do for like the run shot afterwards so it doesn't end up with like stupid numbers yeah. so again it doesn't come up very often but there's been a few figures where they've not known how that works when you've had like different re uh, replacement values occurring at the same time so it's essentially you know you replace it, you replace it, and then subtract with anything it. that says a number, you then that happens first, and then anything that says divide it or half it generally, that happens afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Replace, um, it, replace, change, and then you do your whatever function to it, multiply it, half it. You might be doing that way. Yeah. 
It's anything okay. that just says when you end up with two replacement values and they're not, and one's a division and one's a number, and the number one comes first. So if you look at a sniper rifle, that's what they had to do. They had to see its sniper rifle number replacement occurred first. So they've just, you know, it's in line with that. Right. Anyway, critical hits has been changed a little bit um, because critical hits now can't be evaded because they're basically saying that um, if you roll two sixes, the target becomes hit. So anything that changes, like, um, affects hits would then try to turn the hit like a super sensors tries to turn a hit into a miss well the critical hit says it becomes hit so it bypasses the super sensors but that was like the best thing and slash worst <laughs> thing in the game is going yes i got a critical hit oh, I it. these dodged it <laughs> I, I, that's like the the, the meme of hero clicks when you played it long enough is you know if you roll a critical hit that they are dodging that attack. Well, we can't now. Oh, that's that's but that's the worst change so far. It's not for any <laughs> for, not for any functional value, but just just for the the like the the game breaking rage that was induced. Us. Oh, I've critical yeah. hit. I've won the game. Oh no, I have because Spider Man's dodged it. <laughs> Yeah, well, none of that anymore, I'm afraid. Um, the, there's a few, that, there's no longer things like um, critical hits of support and things like that, because support, it had like, support used to be an attack, then it wasn't an attack, um, but then they added in an extra section in what happens when you roll critical hit or miss with support. Um, it's not an attack, it doesn't, critical hits and critical misses do not come into it anymore. Sweet. Um, it doesn't mention like zero damage attacks, so things like mind control and in cap can critical hit or miss. Okay. Critical hit's not going to do you any good, but a critical miss is still going to deal you damage. What does, okay, so how is it still worded exactly the same? That no, it's just not worded at all. So you just assume when if you're well making an attack, if you critical miss, then you're taking the unavoidable damage. Okay. But it used to be that if you were making a zero damage attack, you wouldn't. You're not affected by the critical miss. No, it happened very often, but if you were like mind control and somebody rolled a critical miss, you would not have to take the damage. Yes. Fair. Yeah, fair enough. Probably, you know, not a lot of people might not have realized that anyway, but yeah. Um, they've changed the wording, going on to something else. They've changed the wording of um, a few damage types, uh, specifically unavoidable and pushing damage. Um. It's not like changed very much, but as it makes you think, because it's basically saying that it can't be reduced, prevented, um, except by any effect, except one that specifically mentions it. Um, okay. So that's with pushing damage. And unavoidable damage, it can't be reduced or prevented by any effect whatsoever. But there's been rulings in the past where it said, oh, you can. You know, things like Proteus on a stop click, you can only take damage from close attacks, so unavoidable damage he doesn't care about. And things with willpower, I'm specifically thinking of Gertrude no less, and I'm thinking, does... can I transfer that? I'm not transferring the damage, but can Gertrude take the damage now from pushing if Gert pushes? I'm not 100% sure how it works now. So that again, that might be something that kids just need to clarify or if somebody asks a rules question on that when they're letting people ask rules questions um but it depends on uh, they, if it, it's in the end of the day old lace is still taking damage and gertrude still says whenever she's taking damage that she can basically take a damage instead so wouldn't it still allow her yeah, to it depends it says instead so is that preventing the damage being dealt I'm not sure. If it's if it's preventing the damage from being dealt, which I think it is, isn't it? Um then it can't be I can't prevent that damage from being dealt. What if it's still been damage? dealt and then it's just been palmed off on somebody else. I don't know. Uh, so when it would take that when all this would take damage, you may instead deal Gertrude one unavoidable damage. Instead just assume that it's means that she's still dodge it. Instead, yeah. I know it's just semantics, but you, you yeah. need to maybe That's clarify. The thing. 
from all the games I've been playing with Goatling Lord Lace, if suddenly I couldn't avoid like pushing damage, then it becomes a lot less good. Because somebody could just go out and in cap them. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> that would be brutal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so that was damage times. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. They've going on to some terrain maps and things like that. Um, they've introduced a few different terrain types. Um, we've seen some of them appearing on maps previously, but it's been like special rules. So you've got like. Uh, windows and doors and obscuring terrain which may be appearing on new maps windows are basically just saying you can you know windows are you can have lines of fire drawn through them but you can't move through them doors are sort of the opposite where you can move through them but you can't draw lines of fire through them uh, which we've seen on maps before but obviously as I say there have been special rules is just sort of clarifying that it is a you know, they'll have a, some sort of coloured dotted line, which I can't remember if it's on my head, what each one of them are, but it's in the powers and abilities card. And obscuring terrain is like the opposite of water terrain, where it's hindered for lines of fire, but not for movement. Okay. Okay, that's just a few things on there, but obviously they will be... It's Popping up on the, Yeah, it'll be on the different new maps, they'll probably start seeing them. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I think that is about it. Apart from, there's a lot. There of was a few, few like, silver rules that I've got. Yeah, I'm going on to sort of near the end of the rule book now. Um, there's a new silver. There used to be like golden rules, which says you can never break them. Um, they've introduced silver rules, which say you can never break them unless the effect says you can. So it's not going to happen very often, but say a silver rule is a rule of zero, which is a new thing, causing a bit of controversy because it's a bit like the timing issue that some characters are getting sort of nerfed by it. Um, so basically the rule of zero is saying that if you have a zero speed, printed speed, you can't move. If you have a zero attack, printed, can't attack if you have zero passengers you can't carry um and if you have zero range you can't make a range attack but it has a little caveat to say that unless a special power says you've replaced it there's okay. some characters that don't really have a range but then they have a special power that says oh you have no range now so that's what about fine things like um so what about things where you where you make an attack but you have no attack like Casey Suki Superman has has oh yes that is nothing. one yeah he has in cap on his like special like uh, end click but he, ha he, he, click. he he doesn't he doesn't he, he doesn't attack using his attack value he attacks with I think it's 12 built on yes. his power itself but as written he's not allowed to do that then because he's got no attack at all he's got zero attack value printed because look at it like the printed um, yeah so he will may have to be a rotter. There's the other thing, I think it's Toy Soldier, who has zero speed, but he has sidestep. So he can't use sidestep because he can't move with zero printed speed. So I don't think there's any other characters apart from those two. There might be some older ones. Um, I'm not 100% sure why I can see, well, a little bit they can see that why they wanted to bring in the rule of zeros to say you can't then perplex up your speed and suddenly start moving. If somebody's got a zero speed, there should be a really good reason why they've got a zero speed. Um, or if somebody's got a zero attack, again, there's reasons why. I think the other thing was um, Mysterio's illusion tokens. Yep, they have a capacity. They've got zero attack, but then they've got the Sinister Syndicate team belly, so they want to copy some of these attack value. Uh, but they've got a printed zero attack, so they're not allowed to attack. Yeah. So oh. those characters might get a rod out, or they might slightly be worded, I think, because obviously at the moment they're completely useless. Yeah. Um, fair enough. Um, yeah, I said, I think it just needs just like, kind of clarification for it. I, I, I don't see I don't see a reason for the zero attack one I mean the only thing literally the only standard 
thing I can think of that's this is ruining is the like the vehicle like certain vehicles. Uh, vehicles is different because vehicles specifically say which I think I, I had down to come onto vehicles um, that they bypass that rule. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking solely for things like the the about cycle. That I thought yeah, yeah. the entire point was that they can then shoot, can they can shoot a wall. Yes. Even if yeah. the you know they can damage a wall, even if the person no, inside the car because the, it specifically says that that bypasses the rule of zeros when they replace their attack value. What possible the reason? Yeah. Okay. So it might just say those characters might have to have a little trait that says this bypasses the rule of zeros. And then that would be fine. Fair enough. Um, right, going on to... Uh, I think I'm probably flitting about here now. Um, first turn immunity has changed slightly now. Instead of saying that you can't be targeted or whatever until you take an action, it's now saying it's related to the starting area instead. So you can't be moved, placed, damaged, or targeted by the effect of an opposing character uh, unless you leave the starting area. So you can do the whole, I'm going to make this character take a move action to move nowhere, just so you can push them, and they don't break first enemy. Yes. Or you okay. can do, like, a perplex or anything else you fancy doing, that as long as you don't leave your starting area, then it's still protected by first enemy. That's fine. Yeah, not a big change, but something to keep in mind. Um, the wording of because I know can't use because I know we said that um, ignore and counter are going away and can't use is a thing that's just replacing everything. Um, the it's changed how they define can't use from like the old rules to this rules because now they're saying you're outwitting something. Previously, when you outwitted, say perplex, the effects of the perplex would go away. If you, it's if Nick Fury used his Watcher's Eye on your perplex that you've already used, your perplex effects would not go away because the duration would stay, you just can't activate it anymore. Yes? Okay. That's what the old rules said. Yeah, the new right. rules say something different. The new rules actually suspend the duration of the effect, but they don't expire. So basically, it's if I perplex something, you are with that perplex. My perplex effect um, is suspended, so it is no longer in play. But let's say if you lost your outwit or I KO you, then the my perplex kicks back in again. So it's not like lost, what? in which case it's not you're not going back to it. Um, if okay. you you know, so if I perplex something and you kill that character, then the perplex is going to be lost and gone. But if you outwit that perplex, it's going to suspend it. So it might kick in at a later date on its normal duration. If, say, something happens to the guy with the outwit. So you outwit, so I've got Batman here, Robin next to him, his perplex is defensive by one. Uh, you outwit the perplex on Robin. You then go to, I don't know, punch Batman in the face, critically miss, so you know you lose your outwit. The perplex kicks back in because yes. you've lost your outwit. Yeah. Okay, so there's a fine. difference between lost and can't use, which is yeah, which is what they had before when they had can't use, ignore, blah blah blah, um, and counter. So can't use just suspends effects. It might be the kick back in, but the effect is goes. But previously it what it didn't. So they want the you know bear that in mind. What happens? Because you're gonna get can't can't use quite a bit from like oh wait. What happens in the event that I always use super strength and you're carrying a heavy object? Um, the object stays. So you, keep... you can't then use super strength for any of its effects, but you do not drop the object. Okay. I think that is how it is works. I think super... that's a specific example. Super strength specifies like, has uh, brackets of and can pick up the brackets and hold heavy objects. That would suggest that you can't hold a heavy object unless you have no, super strength. No, I'm sure strength. it actually says that in the, in and the somewhere. There's a, like, there's a, that's a specific example they use yeah, in the Yeah, I books. think it's, like, it's an example they use. Okay, fair enough. I can't remember if it's in the rule book or in the other one, but I do remember reading that. 
Uh, mm. Yes, that's yeah. It actually is a specific like, part of picking up objects. Is the little black section. Uh, an opposing character uses that whip to use super strength, stops the character from using knockback and picking up further heavy, heavy objects. But the chosen character can still put down a heavy object or mm. use it in an object attack. Uh, or just mm. to continue to hold it. The character may also still pick up light objects. Great. So, yeah, these little things keep in mind because that the outwit has changed how it works. Just can't use and can't use it slightly different than one counter was. Um, so, for, for me, that that all sets it's like that, the, the logic of that is all fine, um, and it is much easier for them to keep holding the object rather than just drop it. But I don't like the they'll idea. they'll get those super back again, and then have to go back and try and pick it up again. And they're yeah. sitting in it now, so they're half in the movement. So yeah, that was always annoying when you outwit in super strength and you end up dropping your object. But I don't like the idea that they can still make the object attack with it. it like, just for the simplicity of the rules, I don't mind Superman keeping hold of whatever thing he's carrying. But the fact that you've outwitted it, which effectively means all you've done is mean that you can't take ch- choose to do the knockback. That seems like a waste of time. I can always say something exactly. Yeah, the, well, you'd have the, to drop it then because the way they've done object attacks is separate than the super strength. It's not the super strength isn't giving you any bonuses. The fact that you hold an object gives you a bonus. So if they wanted to stop you giving that damage bonus, they need to get rid of the object somehow. So you can still. I so saw this obviously me not, not knowing how object attacks works. So you, you can still use it in an attack, that's fine, but you won't get the extra damage because of this outwit. No, you would still get the extra damage because object attack has got nothing to do with super strength. Right, yeah. That, 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 because that's... everybody can pick up a light object, so if you... It would actually be worse, because if you, you can't outwit somebody's ability to pick up a light object, there's no way of outwitting that yet. Yeah. It's not super strength. I'm not getting this light object bit. from any power. So you can't outwit that. Then you can outwit Superman's ability to pick up a heavy object. So you can you can, you can only affect Superman, well, but you can't affect this other block who's like whacking you with a light one. It, it does say that even if you outwit <laughs> super strength, you can still pick up a light object. My only issue is that you can still use a pre carried heavy, heavy object. One. Like, right. I don't, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. So don't bother to win super it. strength then, because it's quite useless. Yeah. To, to Unless the only time it's going to be of any use is if someone's going to charge at you and pick up the object on the way to yeah. smack you over the head with it. That's like the only time that picking that doing that is going to be worth it. Unless hmm. it's a specific knockback issue. Yeah, with the charge or something like that's better. Yeah, it's just <laughs> always going to be the case anyway. Yeah. Um. Right. Where am I up to? Right. So that was can't use. A couple of other things I'm just jumping around on, just some changes. Uh, replacement characters has changed, and I think this is something again WizKids may have to revisit because there's some issues. Um, so basically, when it used to be that all effects would carry over to your replacement character, now um, that only only two effects carry over: um, action tokens carry over, and um, if that character was given a costed action, carries over. So it means it can't, like, Batman can't do a power action, and then he swaps to another Batman who can do a power action. He's already done a costed action, so you can't do another costed action. But, right. But things like being carried doesn't get carried over. So if I can carry Superman up, he could then replace into a different Superman, and that Superman could then attack. But... If that I effect, have, it says, doesn't get carried over. But if I have my bulletproof Superman equipped with Eclipse or and he changes to the faster than a speedy bullet one, then Eclipse all of those things don't go. But what if I change yes. it back? Uh, it doesn't carry over, so I don't think he's going to get it back again. Oh no, he might do, because he might be still assigned to the original character on the sideline. Probably. Is that, is that the same as, say, for example, the super strength one? If I've got my faster than speedy bullet one, I pick up a light object and change into the heavy one does he keep the the, the, the super strength one does he then keep the light object or i assume no, not it doesn't, doesn't get carried over and i'm assuming the the that one the object still stays with the other character and so that means i could have you know my five now shifting superman focused guys i could have just an absolute bucket load of them 
and they could all have their own little object that they're holding as Superman ch- changes between himself. Yeah. If you want to. Anyway, oh, well. I think you have, have to clarify that because there might be other effects that you say, well, that has to carry over because otherwise it's just silly. Yeah. I think like, being carried is an obvious one because I don't think they want to go back to the rules where you can like, take actions after you've been carried. Yeah, because um, what, 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 what they're suggesting there is, again, I'm going to listen to Super Superman. I've got a fly Superman carries around bulletproof Superman and pops him right in front of you. It's bulletproof Superman then turns into super strength one and smashes you over the face because that one hasn't yeah. been carried. Yeah. That, yeah, that's stupid. So they've obviously tried to simplify replacement and maybe... So, I don't know. I, I, uh, I also, need to add add the, at least being carried in. There might be other things that crop up that say, well, that needs to be for, um, added in as well. For me, the replacement worked absolutely perfectly before. The only thing I can think of is, is that they were sick of crap like putting an equipment on it or you know a, a resource or something onto Superman, Deadpool, Batman, so that they could be broken on every version. You know, yeah, so you're getting a lot of different effects out of it. If you get if you're putting an equipment on one character, might want one power, and the other one might want a different power and stuff. Yeah, it like, sort of makes them. You know, I mean, I don't think Superman generally had a equipment on, but you think like a lot of Deadpool being played with. Uh, yeah, like, I'm, I'm thinking. I was thinking, well, maybe the, uh, the that Superman might have been worth it with the Supreme Intelligence because they're giving willpower to them. Yeah. It's really good, but yeah, that, that will no longer be a thing. The two dead, the two Deadpool teams, they both where they both had equipment on them, so that they were like just to give them down and normalize. Yeah, yeah that was, can't even do it with any equipment, any sort of like Hulkbuster parts and things like that. Meh. They had some equipment as well. You can still unequip them. There are no rules. You can unequip them and then just change. Then just after spend yeah, the other turn, put it back on. Right. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably just stay with the other character, but I don't think then it becomes worth it to put any equipment on somebody you're only going to get part of the time. I think it's just a, I think unless the change is just, just, just a massive nerf to all of those shifting focus and... Well, it but, just means, yeah, you're not going to bother putting any, any, them any other effects and stuff. But yeah, I think they do need to, like, revisit that because it'll come up, um... Carry. There might be a one that does. See, there might be other effects that has to carry over because otherwise it doesn't make any sense for them not to. Uh, yep. Just a side but, note: of the this, this is the this is like the one thing that I, like I like the way that they brought out the you know, here is our intentions for all these powers, and then instantly took in feedback. I don't see why they then had to hide these rules for so long. Because it must have been completed. I mean, we're getting a starter set in a week or so that's going to have these rules printed in. Why this yeah. couldn't have been dropped six weeks ago or three months ago, you know, and they obviously had a draft a version of it that they were happy to take it to print ready. Skip it from, you know, Hammer of Thor, put it in the next set so that people can scrutinize, go through it, and then when they go okay. actually hands up, three or four of these little bits are wrong. And then get it corrected before you go to print because we know facts. We've seen this before. Like you know, we've we've had uh, rule books come out and packs come out where they've instantly changed the mind of what it's going to be. But then it doesn't make any difference because the next four or five sets ahead are still like still printed broke like crap broken rules. The team bases here's the team base rules changed pretty much instantly, and yet team bases are released two years later was still getting these rules printed on their card like so you know fine well they're going to change loads of these rules here and then I'm going to be buying starter sets for the next five, three years yeah well I don't think with the wrong rules like, in it yeah the rules are not they may not change the rules on some of them it just means some characters might need a route to have them to work properly this one might be what were the other changes we said I said around the rule of zeros but that's characters probably need change rather than the actual rules maybe and what was the other one I said? Lost well, the replacement. Uh, replacement, and there's one more. Um, timing of tokens. Yeah, but I mean, I, it, it, for me, it's just it would have been lo- a lot easier if they just went, here's the rules. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you would expect them to be clear tested with when they've 
had nit them. pickers. That, 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 that's yeah, what we want. <laughs> you want some nit pickers that actually come across. Yeah. Whether they'd actually brought that up or not. Um, and then I hadn't had time to fix it. So, yeah, that, or, yeah, that, 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 that's my only complaint is that, is that we, we've seen this before. If, if, you, if you go into. Set, set a rule book and feel confident enough to put it to paper and release it and you know we all know you're going to stick with it for several years regardless of whether it was right or wrong why why not release it first to be scrutinized you it clearly seen that the community is a useful source for you since you'd already changed three or four powers within two weeks of announcing what they were going to be because you've got feedback like why not keep taking advantage of that put out the rule book and go, oh, five or six nitpickers on the internet have started a discussion based on this. Actually, that is a real issue and it can be easily fixed with a sentence, an extra word. Yeah. But I think that then you'd example. probably be putting back the... We've been waiting long enough for the rules, so... I, mean, I, would, I don't mind, does yeah. So you might have had to wait quite a few more months. I would have, I would have rather waited for this rule book to be in the Harley Quinn set or the... <laughs> whatever set is after that then get it and know now that we're probably going to get the rules in the Harley Quinn set and then after that and after that with every printed version of that being wrong and that somebody's going to have to go it online. It might not be that wrong. I think it just might be, as I say, some of these things are the fix on a character, so the erotic characters. Maybe. And one, two of these might just have, or they'll just have another little sentence. Hopefully they will then be able to, yeah. Depends I, how many they printed. I, I know. Be I know. Able to change I, future ones, but it's, yeah. I don't think it's going to take a huge change. No, no. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to like. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying what they've done is wrong or complaining about, you know, a, a, their way of doing it. Because I think they've took a step in the right direction. I just feel like just one more step in that direction. Mm. Because yeah, as I said, I imagine they probably got about twenty thousand million of these rule books piled in a stock room to be shot in every start set slash fast forces set plan I'm putting it in for the next three years and there may well be two or three sentences that need to be added to it yeah uh, it's probably like yeah I don't think it's as good as any different than other probably not companies I think you've got other you know the rule books will go where they'll have to do errata and then they'll have the rule book and then they'll have a separate little errata rule book that you can download and go well this has to go with that one because there's some mistakes in that one I think that's like with most games that have gone on for quite a while or, or. yeah but yeah so it'll be nice everything's perfect but unfortunately life isn't in like that oh, but anyway it was so close <laughs> right yeah move right, along close. Like right I've nearly finished on this one um, I think the only other thing was just a change to equipment which I think there's been an article a sort of preview in that when some of the um, uh, Hammer uh, Hammer Thought Mighty Thought figures came out with equipment in that they are, you can do the different types of, well, not types of equipment, but um, you can, but, but, but what am I trying to say? Equipment objects, you can equip um, friendly the... or any or unequip. Yeah. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. That's what you're trying to say. Sort of. Um, so that there's, there's. So you there... can equip, because in the past, they'd have been just like, you can only equip friendly items. So equipment by default to equip friendly now they can say equip friendly or they can say equipped any so any means that you can equip your opponent's equipment yeah yeah but obviously each equip bit of equipment will specify whether they're friendly or any and it'll also say that on an unequip ko which is a default i think um our unequipped drop so when it has been unequipped and generally i think the only way you can unequip something is if that character dies I don't think you can choose to like do a power action to unequip something. Um, I think it, the only thing I can see, unless in some other effect says to unequip it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't. Yeah, it just says it, it, on, in the equipment rules. It says that when an equipped character is killed, replaced, or equipped again, there you go. That's your replacement. Um, the current equipped character becomes unequipped. Yes. So that might mean the object is cured if it says unequipped key or or might mean it drops if it says unequipped drop yes yeah. so you definitely don't want to have any equipment on a replacement character because you are kids you are killing it yeah oh. you're killing it uh, so it either says the default 
it's unequipped kill, but obviously some might say unequipped drop. So I think they've said that on all the objects that do not mention any or drop will be equip friendly and unequipped kill. But some of the new stuff, especially a lot of the equipment in Mighty Thor, uh, is unequipped drop. I can't remember if it says equip any or anything, but yeah. But unequipped any means you do not let your opponent nick it. Yeah. Don't put it too near their star. Yeah, this, uh, they're, they're, all, they're all cute. I mean, yeah, they're, 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 basically all the new items are coming with three, uh, or two, potentially three little tags to it. It's either, is it indestructible or not? Is it equipped to friendlies or anyone? And when it's unequipped, is it killed or is it dropped? As well as, you know, its normal effect for whatever magical thing you've picked up. I think more oh, special ob- all special objects are indestructible, or I don't no. think they have to be, do they? Oh. The, in, specifically in the Mighty Thor set, all of the named ones are indestructible, or right, all the ones that are being ones, com- yeah. The generic ones don't have the indestructible tag. Yeah, so you can just shoot them. You can just shoot the mace, however random the generic to... thing it is. Yeah. Um, yes, I don't think there's anything else changed on equipment. Um, apart from that, right, that is me going through all of the rule book and picking out anything I thought was interesting. I've got a few things just on the comprehensive... Well, what is it called? Comprehensive Rulebook Supplement. Yeah. Right. Should I crack through them? Yeah, fire away. Okay. Um, there's a little change on victory points. Determining victory points when the player is defeated, you kill and score all remaining gale elements on their force, even if they weren't used that game. Because previously, things like ID cards you have not used do not get scored. And it's just changed to say, yes, they do get scored. So anything that on your game that you haven't used and they just sat there, then if you get killed, then they're going to get scored as well. So if yeah. you've got a special object lying around that you haven't bothered picking up or something, wait, if your team gets killed, then that is scored. And anywhere. Yes. So that is not a huge change, but just something to keep in mind. Um, there's a little change on line of fire and movement through an intersection. Yeah, I like this one. Um, where you're basically just choosing this movement or line of fire through an intersection. You're just choosing one side of the intersection to destroy the thing rather is, than both. The thing is, the actual line of fire version has pretty much always been the same anyway. Like, if you were in an ex- intersection, for example, between water terrain and hindering terrain, and sh- sh- you could choose which one of those you were shooting through. Well, you would go through the, the path of least resistance. You know, if you could shoot through Hindrian, but you couldn't shoot through blocking, and you went to the intersection, you would just go through the Hindrian one. But yeah, but there was, there was no, like, there's no clear defined set of that. Like, for example, I might have somebody in the water, um, i trying to think. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's fine. It's nice. Now I'll just pick you one. You can't just sidestep diagonally and smash a whole load of walls. Yes, you only do one. Um... Do, do, do. Right, I've lost the point there. Uh, where Sorry. are we? Are? Okay. Um, yeah, there's a little thing on objects that if objects start the game equipped to or held by a character, they do not have their point value count towards the build total. Because that was like a thing people were asking in the initial previews of uh, Mighty Thor. It said this person was equipped with this item, but it didn't say if you have to pay for it or not. Because previously they've either said you have to pay for it or they've said it's free. But it's a general rule now if if a character starts with an object equipped, then it doesn't count towards your build total. Yeah, let's finish yeah. it forward. Um, they've got some clarification about different uh, like triggered effects, burst effects and aura effects. Now these were sort of in place uh, previously, but it just wasn't as well defined. So it's like the equivalent of, say, like energy explosion versus the bulletproof supermans plus one defense to everyone. So, yeah, sort of similar, where it's basically defining, like, because sometimes you get a power that says adjacent characters get plus one defense. Um, and sometimes that means, does that mean... Uh, 
it says, or it might say, like, free action, uh, Jason characters get plus one defense, and you're thinking, does that mean they have to stay adjacent? Or do they always get that? So it's, it's clarified the difference between a burst and an aura. A burst is something that is an action, generally, and has a duration. Okay. So, Come back to that example. Free action, uh, adjacent characters get plus one to defense until the end of the next turn. That would be a burst effect because it's an action and it has a duration. But it does mean then that those characters that then move away and are no longer adjacent, they still get the bonus For the, because they're in the that turn. initial burst. Yeah, until the duration ends. So aura effects are then the opposite of that. Are then passive effects. They don't have a duration and they're not activated. So you're not having to give them an action. We just said the adjacent characters get plus one defense. That just means that they have to be adjacent to you to get the bonus. But it's just a passive thing. It's not activated. It's just as long as they're adjacent to you, they'll get that bonus. And it's just to find that. I know it was previously, sometimes you're looking and you weren't sure, right, does that mean they have to stay adjacent or not? Things like that. Um, that comes into play in a second when I talk about ID cards. So I might as well do that now. Um, because the inspiration of ID cards have said that specifically it is a burst effect rather than an aura effect. Because previously it was an aura effect where... Um, you were next to him. You would have to be adjacent to get that effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, because it's a burst effect, you'll get something like, I don't know, I'll call in the Hulk. And it'll say I can use charge and get plus one. Right, so I call in the Hulk and then I'll TK that character and oh he's not no longer adjacent to the hulk but it's a burst effect so i get the charge and i get the plus one um to attack just because hulk then was called in adjacent to me so that's that's good i mean that's the yeah. only real thing i can think of the, the wonder woman inspiration is still in play and that basically means it was used to be a case of you called her in to get charge on somebody and you either got the charge or you got the sort of attack because you're pretty much never going to use both. Yeah. Now, you always have both. That's that's awesome. But it's also useful for like some effects like they give you improved targeting or something because like um, Nightwing, for example, gives you improved targeting see through hindering. So so let's see if your... movement was the harder one to trigger out to so actually get any use out of. Yeah, but something like, say, you call him in um and doc ock uh, you see oh doc ock you can see through hindering now for your outwit so then doc ock can get carried 13 squares up the board with overdrive and says i can see through hindering now so i can see through your stealth and i can outwit your defense power before i flurry you so that becomes a little bit more useful because you don't then have to have have not have the agency at the end of your move is really awkward because of the limitations on your ID counter and the fact that it's then going to disappear when you carry your team up. But because it can be used a bit more, a bit more utility now for you know some of the effects. I quite like that. Um, since I'm talking about them, ID cards have changed quite a bit. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if this is replacing um, the text on uh, existing ID cards. So again, I think this is just something they may need to clarify um, because there's number one, there's no mention of real names, so it's just saying names. Um, now, new figures do have real names because, like in the Mighty Thor set, they still have real names. But when they've said around, we'll talk about ID cards in the rule book, they are not mentioned real names. So whether it is, this does replace the text on ID cards, there'll be no more Cosmic Spider-Man. Thank you very much. Meh. They've already, they've already nerfed him at the ground. Why bother just killing him off entirely? It seems to more effort as um, well. But that's a lot of characters, especially like seeing Elseworlds, where they've got, haven't got a real name. They've got, you know, Green Lantern of Gotham City or something like that. But it's Batman. It's Bruce Wayne. So in... If this is sticks, then... You know, you're going to have to just have Green Arrow being Green Arrow. Oh. There's no other. Green Arrow is never not Green Arrow, is he? Uh, he probably is. He's been that Templar block, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, that... I think that just needs to be because a bit confusing around if that is replacing... Um, if real 
names are going. And the other thing to note with that is, is there's no mention of things like at the beginning, you have to do it at the beginning of the turn. It can be done as a power action any time during your turn. And it's just still once per turn. Uh, so, and the other thing it doesn't mention is you do not have to have zero action tokens. So, you know how Jean Grey used to TK people up? And then he used to call somebody in. Well, any TK, I can do that now. Um, and you can do it if you've got an action token. Couples can do it when they've got two action tokens. Sorry. Um, so it becomes a lot more difficult to time when, you know, if somebody's got like an ID card on, usually you've got, oh, well, that guy's got a token on, you'll not be able to call him in next turn. So I was hoping that ID cards would get taken back a little bit with things like Jean Grey effect not being a thing, but I think you know I think this sort of encourages people to use them a bit more. Well, certainly it does encourage me to use them. Right? Hmm. We'll see. It depends on where they, where they land on it. As I said, it really does depend. If the real name gets taken out, that's going to hurt. But I think the tokens are going to be a bigger impact. Yeah, and the fact that it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the turn, because you can do it any time during the action phase. So as I say, you can TK somebody up um, with anybody, any TK I know, and then get a longer reach from it. Um, yeah, so I think they just need to clarify, does that mean that they have changed the text on existing cards, which I think they have to, because of the way that the... Um, the fact that you're not allowed now to take any actions during the beginning of your turn because of the ID cards would break that. Yeah. Because it was just so made I think they've had impossible. to change it to fit in line with uh, the turn order. Um, but yeah, just <sighs> maybe some clarification would be nice. Um, ba -ba -ba. one little thing I noticed, which was a change, talks about higher and lower points characters. Yeah, this this I've, this I've read and I don't understand at all. Basically, that just you choose. If you've got two characters, if I'm using Nick Fury, and I'm you've got two hundred point characters, and they're both like your highest points, then Nick says, "Well, I will choose to be that one, and I'll shoot him." Okay, that's boss. Yeah. That's stupid. So, and if all characters, I don't think that's just a temporary thing. I could choose that. I don't have to. It doesn't have to be the same character throughout the game. Next yeah. time I shoot, I could say it's the other one. Well, meh. I think I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it. You know, it's looking at a tie. So if it's a, if it's a tie, then the active player resolves it. Says you know, decides which one. Um. Do, 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 do. Then I'm going to go on to vehicles because they've changed it. Tad. Um, as I said before, they bypass the rule of zeros if they have a zero attack value. They now no longer can be changed size. So, you know, how we like to change our Quinjet to be a giant Quinjet occasionally. Yeah. And you're not allowed to do that. Uh, you cannot carry them, which it mentions in the carry. And they also now don't ignore the wing symbol for carrying. So I don't, don't carry that. flyers. I, I just I, I feel like I feel like flyers are getting really again just hit too hard here for like pretty it's not like big reason. hits. They can get knocked off buildings now, and and overdrive can't carry them. Yeah, that, that, that's that's enough for me. I mean, if I can't have as well a, a, a jet, a Merc jet that's coming up, if what why why can't Miss Marvel get in there? It's just it just seems strange. Well, they can they can get in, as in they can pilot it. Yeah. They just can't be carried by it. Um, autopilot vehicles now take one unavoidable when they're given any action. Because it used to be attacks, so giving them a movement action or something like that is also going to damage them, which I think makes them quite pretty worthless. Um, you don't be paying a lot of points for an autopilot vehicle because it's just going to die pretty fast just by any actions you give it. Um, anything else? That is pretty much it, I think. Yeah. Um, for like the supplementary one. So it's just the last bits just been the timber ladies. 
Yeah, just team abilities, and then we are done. Um, so they have got rid of a few, or basically turned them into past rules. Um, things like you won't be seeing uh, Fantastic Society. Four, things like that. Fantastic um, Four, I, I mean... <laughs> Why, why not just why not just put just give out a statement? We hate Fantastic Four. We 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 it's just we're not going to pretend anymore. We just they're just dead. Just get over it. Yeah, they're dead to us. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so end of like simplified some others really. So the team abilities that are do replacement placement values like Batman Enemy, JSA, Sinister Syndicate, um, our defenders. They're basically saying like what. Um, it's had the same word in his defend house where it has to be adjacent now to get your printed value so again no more daisy chain in those things like avengers initiative superman ally instead of having their own word and they've just been given the improved movement improved targeting which makes things a lot more straightforward master of evil again above you know not rather than having its own word in which matches colossal stamina exactly then they've just been given them colossal stamina a couple of changes with the Avengers and JLA rather than giving them the free, uh, well, the move that doesn't count towards the actions. They've been given plus one move. Meh. Um, meh. Outsiders have been down to six range, which is fair enough because 10 was pretty much yeah. bit too much. Um, Brotherhood of Mutants Injustice Society um, has been changed to. You get a removing action token or if you hit with a 10 or a 12 or 11, 10, 2 or 12. Um, Mystics is now penetrating rather than unavoidable and you can't copy it, which is quite a big change. And the one I like the best is that Underworld uh, team ability uh, no longer requires both characters to have the team ability, they're just the person with the team ability can carry as long as the person they carry shares a keyword with them. So things like the Joker Thug or the Court of Owls initiate, is it? Yeah. We've got like a 10 point person with that ability now, you know, as a viable taxi. I forgot, I saw, I forgot rid of the, any reference to requiring to the points difference as well. No, you get passenger one, but if you're higher points, you get passenger two. So basically right. means, which is the same thing as what it used to be. Yeah. So, so if you're a high point character, you can carry two lower point So Thug people. can carry Joker, but Joker can carry two Thugs. Apart from Joker, um, as long as, yeah. yeah. A lot so of the Jokers don't have the Underworld one. Yeah, I think the problem was with things like the Gotham Underworld teams where there was you would have, your, would have your Thugs with Underworld and you'd have all the bosses with Batman Enemy. So then you wouldn't be able to carry anybody because both of them required the... Um, team ability, but now you know the thugs and that and whatever the low point guys all with the underworld uh, team ability have become much more useful now because they can carry their bosses around. Which was whenever you built like a Gotham underworld team, you'd be going, Well, none of these carries fly, so I can't get any carries, and all they're going around by themselves. So that's next the Joker team. Yeah, I think Joker Thug becomes really good with the Joker because not only can he transfer the damage or become the target of the attack or whatever then he's uh, you can taxi him around as well uh, 10 I, points I was thinking about Lex like, like and Joker's trick if, if, it, if oh, it yeah, 20 points or the more 20, I think it's 20 points or more yeah but that's not as useful because then they're given all of the I suppose it's more useful if you're not playing a theme team but if you're playing because they both don't need the team oh yeah it's, uh... only one of them does but it's still useful to um do but you could play him in say a scientist team or something like that and just have one um it wouldn't necessarily have to have a theme no well not in a theme team so then uh people are getting it and you know doesn't matter now if they both got a team but it doesn't it still need the keyword yeah so well, anyway yeah yes you can, i was looking at him myself but i was also looking at that joker thug just with the 140 point joker really because i know sean's been playing a team with that but the problem is that he sort of sits in the starting area and if he has to move the joker out he's always put a token on because he's going where you carry him but now the little joker thug can run off and carry him 
Right, and I think that's about it. There's a couple of changes where they've got rid of Minion of Doom and Calculator and made it team player, which does, it's still a wild card, but they've just got rid of, uh, to change the name. Just one, I think we've... one side thing. I wish that, I hope they go team player and then later on change it to team player slash far higher. Cause I think team player makes it sound like they've got like, you know, Spider-Man joining in with things, whereas the ones that they've replaced are like the douchebags who are like, you know, the villains who have that. Well, you can still have a team of villains. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. If you, I, I like the idea of just making them like far higher. Or, you know. Yeah, well, you could have done, but yeah, but yeah, well, it, it's fine. But I, so I think they can. They could use that for like it just saves you having a trait that says wild card. Yeah, it just you know if you've got like that Nightwing or something, and rather than seeing. Um, you know, that give him a trait to say he is a wild card. They could just slap the why, why not team belly on us. I was going to say, why not just say Spider-Man team belly is the version of the Marvel Spider, like the Marvel wild card. Everyone who is Marvel and the wild card has that belly. And then remember the stupid stuff like, uh, you know, if you got the Spider-Man, you know, keyword or team belly, you get Sinister Syndicate people kill you better or that kind of thing. Yeah, it's always been a bit strange where you've got a specific um, team belly that you want to give somebody, but it has no connection with the actual uh, team. So having, like, Minions of Doom, and you're trying to give, like, say, I want to give a villain, a Marvel villain, um, a wild card, but he has no connection with Doctor Doom, so then I have to give him a trade that says he's a wild card. Or, you know, so you've got something like... Uh, chameleon, something like that. That's a wild card, but he has no connection to Doctor Doom. So why am I giving him minions of Doom? Yeah, because giving team player. So it simplifies it a bit, and it might be also because of licensing, because Doctor Doom obviously is, has a connection to Fantastic Four, and as you said, they hate Fantastic Four. So why? Calculator has taken the hit as well, just to pretend to be fair. Yeah. So, anyways, any hoots? Um, that is. All I wanted to talk about. Um, I have to say, this is not comprehensive by any means. No. I'm still requiring everybody to read the um, Powers and Abilities card and the two rule books. Um, I haven't gone through all the changes, I've just gone through, you know, the more nuanced stuff, the things maybe did not so straightforward. As I say, there's one or two things that I think whiz kids need to clarify. Um, so hopefully, when they are starting to um, receive questions again on the rules forum. Somebody um, will be asking those just to uh, we'll let you know when we when we find out. Yeah. But I'll be I'll be interested to test these out. And it's, so is there any? I think for now there's not. I think I said at the beginning that well, we'll talk about what we think of changes, but I think we kind of just picked up on bits and bobs here and there. And I don't think there's anything stand out we need to kind of highlight or any. Is there anyone that you want to like pour one out for now? Any frankly who you know fine well is just dead as far as you're concerned? Not that it's dead, but it's like things like was really you know, you think, oh they've changed that. I'll say I'll say now, Mixie's pulse wave. Because of the timing of when pushing damage occurs that you get your willpower back before you take the pushing damage. Because you used to be that Pushing damage was resolved as the action. Pushing damage was given as the action resolved, rather than after the action resolved. Yeah. So now it's after the action resolved. So Mixie will be pulse waving you, but then the the pulse wave will finish before you take the pushing damage. So you, if you have willpower, you won't be taking any damage. Not a big deal. It still locks you down, but it's lock, really useful to get damage. rid of you not doing any damage. It was, it, um, it, was, it was a little bit key to like just pinging off the occasional click here and there. It also means that... You know, get rid of Cloth of Retaliate and things like that. Go, anything with one click, bang, you're gone. I don't care if you go willpower, you did. Yeah. So that's annoying, especially since I had started making mixy teams again. Uh, I think um, for, me it's, it's, for me, it's all of the shifting focuses. I was so excited for super, the shifting focus Superman yeah. again. And he's just basically dead. Like, it's fine. Not, not necessarily, not dead, because you, you, ne- you were never equipping him with anything anyway, were you? 
last time I played him competitively, he, he was uh, he had wrath on him, but right. he needs he, he needs willpower. It's just as great as all of those are. Without having yeah. willpower, it's not worth it. The only one. Oh, actually, speaking of that, one second. Let me have a look at the. One of them does have willpower. One of them does has willpower, and he's just gotten a lot better with the, because they've changed to quick. What the hell? Hold the horses there. One second. Does it work? Yeah, that's Superman's quite good. He now does three damage if he hits one person, and it's persistent strike damage as well. That's not how it works anymore, is it? Well, you can also like bump his damage up somehow, and then his quick's going to be hitting harder. Okay, I'll. I'll well, hold off. Strike still, still just means it can't be um, reduced below one. So that that part's built in. It's not in. quite as good. Yeah, it's that's still built in. I know I just mentioned the change to precision strike, but it's still <laughs> got the bit where you can't um, reduce it below one. So, but it's only a single target, isn't it? Though. Uh, yeah. So if yeah. you single target quick, then you get the precision strike. If you multi target with quick, you don't get the precision strike. So it's only a single target. As I, I can't believe this. As we've been talking about wrapping things up, saying there's going to be a little bit they're going to have to add here and there. They've added a little bit. If you go on the rule page now and refresh it, literally in the past five minutes, they've added a HeroClix core rulebook updated, revised mm. as of right now. Costed, HeroClix, I'm going to start to look now. <laughs> I, I have uh, under costed action. They are revising something saying just before action resolves, give the character an action token. This signifies that you have resolved the action. So they've changed it. If you get the action oh, token, we're going to redo it. the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I feel like I've just been <laughs> sucker punched. Okay, so you get your action tokens once you finish. They've specified that on both costed actions and double power actions. Uh, is this a change log you look at? It's the change log. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me let me get it up as well so I can re- look at it at the same time you are. There's the, quite a lot of things here. Go on. Uh, the characters have been knocked back equal to the amount of knockback. It hasn't changed elevation. Uh, there's a sentence there that I, I feel yes, like I need the rest I of think it. I'd, yeah, I'd read somebody because they'd done the sequence in the wrong order. Is that they said that the last thing he looked at was if it'd fallen off elevation when that should have been the first thing right that's fine uh, that would end they were looking at when you would end the knockback and it had different steps he had to go through to see it was exactly the same as it was before they just tried to make it clearer but they'd made it they'd done one out of step uh, a character with printed range zero can't make range attacks unless an effect replaces their range with a number so they haven't done the attack one yet and they've also no, added. That's, they said that anyway. Yeah, they have, gonna... they've, they've, they've revised that. There's also added a section about up to it where characters. Have they with, revised that? I thought that was where it was before. The, 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 it's revised. A character with printed range zero can't make range attacks unless the effect replaces their range with a number or is given a minimum range value. And a character with passenger zero can't carry. Said that before. Hang on. It was the attack one that was a problem. Or the movement one. I assume since the next section is a range combat, a uh, range object action. I assume. Just a second, just a second. I'm just looking up the corresponding section. Corresponding. No, I'm looking up. Uh, the fixed to carry. Move it. Character with a printed range of zero can't make range attack. That's an effect that places range value with a number or gives it a minimum range value. So they've just said. Uh, couple community attack unless effect replace the range with a number give them that's what it says before then is there a sentence that has not been changed is there, is, there a, is there a section afterwards saying a character with passenger zero can't carry yes then that I has have not been revised <laughs> that is just printed out what it said before Fair I think much. they're going to need a new I need a new um, updated, updated. updated 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 one uh, ranged, co- ranged object actions uh, replace range object action Range value six with range object minimum value. Okay. Minimum range. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it still uses your range value, but it's a min- minimum. Yes, you can throw it as far as you can. Yes, so that the, the your range. They've basically right, clarified yeah. that if you're going to use an object attack, you can use your printed range if it's longer than six. Uh, and but not necessarily just printed, because obviously you can modify it. Yeah. As well. And. They have added a third bullet Ooh. point if a there character, the carry bar, carry and is fixed, <laughs> and they've revised a, 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 a later sentence which specifies that there is only three, three effects. effects as opposed to two effects. 
Next time it's going to have to be four effects and then five effects and then I'll have to say I'm going to come back again. <laughs> I'll come back in again. Sorry uh, about Monty Python. I think... Uh, okay, so he's fails that seems to be clarified. Vehicles don't modify their speed value due to, due to carry ability and using the passengers uh, may carry flyers. Uh, they can carry flyers now. <laughs> Who they've just made our podcast obsolete. Uh, they've made a certain rant about it, or two specific <laughs> rants about it, it's obsolete, yeah. yeah. In- okay, <laughs> that was quick anyway. I think they need to check the rule of zeros, because that wasn't the bit we were complaining about. <laughs> this, that was, I'm going to say that was, uh, was quick. I mean, I think the rules won't even out for a five days as of I this think recording been, I think they've been watching HC Realm I <laughs> think that yeah, there's been quite a few um, threads on it I think so yeah I think that's that's their that's their way of kind of prioritising rule changes is we're not taking questions yet but if you kick up enough fuss we'll notice and then we'll, we'll fix notice it. that we've made a mistake yeah that's a, a reasonable way of going about it I just think well, I've done doing it quick. As I say, the uh, doing it quick I hadn't noticed some of those. But yeah, so the cost of action before the action resolves. Yeah, so we've got just before the action resolves, give them an action token. But they should have really said use the phase, haven't they? They've got a sequence in. Yeah, they haven't got a, a, an action sequence. That's a problem. They've got an attack sequence, and but that not not necessarily an action sequence because you might be doing run and shot or something, and then you've got to you know got your movement, and then you've got your attack and stuff. So there's no real sequence to an action in the same way. So they basically had to say just before the action resolves. So they brought back in as actions resolve in order to do the timing thing, which is what it previously used to be. They've been trying to too clever around when the timing to put the action token was on. So they've just gone back to what it was before. Pretty much. Which is fine. Good for yeah. them. And then you haven't got to worry about all these weird things. So, yeah. So we've only missed out half an hour. We'll let Sean see if he wants to edit that bit out. So we could be cleverer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, can't, I think it's quite funny. But anyway, maybe we should, maybe we should, he should edit in something at the beginning like, uh, please note that during this podcast you'll hear from me. <laughs> you'll, hear yeah. us talk, you'll hear us rant about a certain thing that will change by the end of it. Please do not yeah. stop listening halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I chose to there. Check in what people's feedback is. Um... Doing something about it, yeah. Which, right. You know, we've complained about before where they haven't, you know, acted fast enough. Yeah, I just, I, I just wish they'd have done this, like, you know, before they decided Half to an hour ago or post it. <laughs> but just, 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 you know, again, back to my winch. Just why not show us this before you decide to print hundreds of thousands of them? Yeah, but I'll go back and see. Yeah, they'll they'll find more mistakes probably. <laughs> There'll be one or two little things and we'll find it later date. So however much you proofread something, it's always going to be one or two little things that try to sneak through. I, just, I don't know. I just feel like in a, in a game with such a active uh, uh, player base, I, the, the, there is, there's, a, there's a very set community. It's not like a case of there's little pocket communities here and there. The online version is a very on HT Realms, on the main site, and that's pretty much everywhere, like where everyone congregates. Hmm. I think we could have fixed. I think we could have spotted all of this and fixed it before print in two weeks, really. But that's just me. Yeah, but they might not have had everything ready at the same time. If there were drip, drip feeding sections, then that sort of adds a lot. Because they might not have had everything finished at the same time, really. That's fair enough. I said, what's it? going back to that um, update <laughs> section? They've got a thing where it says revise the last bit. It says deletion of eight bullet point. What? Oh, I'm missing a deletion. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's. Does that mean that's been deleted? Yes. So the vehicles with printed attack zero can bypass the rules at zeros and make attack if their attack value is replaced. Has gone. Right, so vehicles do not now bypass the rule of zeros. That is true. They're, they're so things like the 
He has the zero attack values. There's quite a few. Don't they? It's, I think I think the ones I was thinking about specifically was like basically any. There's a couple of them, yeah, with three damage, no attack. And specifically, the only right. scenario is useful is if I put in Wingus to pilot. You know, if I put in the I don't know what's it called the Thug to pilot it, it can still shoot walls out for people. Well, it can still do that because that's not an. Is that an attack? I or is it an thought attack? it was an attack. I could be wrong. Um, if you're destroying walls, that's an attack or not? Uh, you see, we'll have to just look this up. Anyway, we'll be getting on for ages here. Yeah. Like, have a quick look, and if we can't find that. Because it's an action, isn't it? To destroy. I'm trying to find where it is. Blah, 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 blah. See, I, I, we can dead air. You keep somebody to keep it's talking. Dead air. We heard Sean. Well, yeah, I could just get you and Sean to talk. Uh, yeah, but I was just... you're leaving us. <laughs> Sean just edit all this out. Just skips that. Skips that bit before I was saying that it was stupid. Ah, and then leave whatever this is back in there. Uh, I don't know. Well, it didn't used to be attacked, did it? Uh, I, I feel like it. Terrain. I feel like it. But I'm an idiot and play a rule. I've played rule five different I think versions. It, yeah, rule. you probably have. That's a thing. Destroy and blocking terrain. Here you go. And destroy. Yeah, it's not an attack because it just says that if you count as damage value, it's a close action or ranged action. And it says if your damage value is three or more, destroy an adjacent piece of blocking or destroy a piece of blocking within range line of fire. And it specifically says this isn't an attack. So, so yes. So, but you then won't be able to attack a person, but you can destroy blocking because that's not an attack. Okay, and then the pennies just dropped as to why that line was in there in the first place. So he basically what the the current line appears. It's obviously not right, but appears to be. I have a jet with zero attack. I put someone in there. That jet still can't make an attack because no matter how who's attack we're placing it with, it still has zero. Yeah, the rule of zeros is off your printed value. Yeah, so the because the not my one, I can't remember, the invisible plane, uh, whatever, if it has zero attack in there, oh, uh, Merc, not Merc Jet, Punisher Van, whatever, there you go, that other one does have zero attack. Punisher Van, uh, I does put it in... Zero attack? It does. I put in the Punisher in it, the Punisher oh, has right, to attack. So that makes that even more rubbish. Yeah, yes, yeah, so the Punisher's Van had zero attack, put the Punisher in, the Punisher fan would actually like take a shot. It can't because it has zero attack. Yeah, that makes that Punisher fan terrible. So does that? But that. May, but you even. But you even. Yeah, well, I was quite happy with it bypassing the rule of zeros because. Because you're a, it's a replacement it's a value. Character, it's a character hanging out the window, isn't it? Yeah. Even the attack well, you, rather than the vehicle. You meant to That's assume the whole point so. Of replacing. Oh, it gets better. Yeah, it gets better. That seems weird. What about that? What about the uh, sky jet? Like the whole point of it is that you get plus to attack but risk the person parlaying it. But oh, you can't even make that attack. The sky cycle. Sky cycle. That's got. That has zero attack, does it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, this is this is why the. Uh, this is why the rule of zero is a good again, idea. I bet you. That needs yeah. just rethinking and scrapping entirely because it's just. just yeah, they're gonna <sighs> say the next next bit. We'll say reinsert <laughs> that bullet point. Uh, right. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I think we've talked long enough. Yeah, so inevitably we're going to post this out and within 20 seconds it's all going to change. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's all wrong, so we're, we're going to leave our ramblings there and when it turns out they're all wrong, we'll talk about it in the next episode expl explaining what we got wrong and what you need to remember. Yeah, definitely. But for now, it's uh, goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Yay! <laughs> Bye, guys. Goodbye. Sit down.